All right, it says I am live. So give me just a minute here while I check to make sure that it's working like it's supposed to. And I can see everyone. I see a couple of people waiting. Cheryl, you were waiting for 18 minutes. That's dedication. Welcome, glad you're here. Hi, Stephanie. All right, I see it. It looks like it's there and live. I'm gonna give a few minutes for everyone to catch up and find this. I am uh, right on time today, which is uh, pretty good considering my brain feels a little halfway on vacation mode still. Hi, Kathleen and Christine and Debbie and Pauline. Um, if you didn't notice last week, Leah was live last week. I moderated um, from Hawaii. Um, my hubby and I, we snuck over there for a week. My brother has a condo, so we were able to just kind of get away and enjoy a little bit of sunshine and work from over there, get up really early in the morning and then enjoy the afternoon together. So I got home Sunday night. So I went from Hawaii and warm to, you probably can't see out the window, um, really cold, especially for Washington and a bit of a snowstorm. So hence the um, layers you see on today, I've got my extra layer underneath because it's cold. So all right, I see Leah has arrived and we've got people filing in. Trish and Marilyn and Sarah and Laura, welcome everybody. Um, I think we, now that I know Leah's here and we're ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and start going over a couple things before we get started. Um, and then we'll just allow time for everybody to find this. Let me make sure I've got it. There we go, up on my phone so I can see it that way. Um, all right, so welcome. Um, this is, we're getting close to the end of the year. So we're starting to run out of lives for the year. I think we've still got a couple more up our sleeves. So if you're watching for those, I'm gonna use a little bit of um, last week's release today, paired up with the release before that. Um, so a couple things just to go over, um, if, especially if you're new to our lives. If you are new, first of all, I'm gonna say welcome now. Please let us know in the comments. I might miss it while I'm crafting. Uh, but we do love to welcome you if this is your first time joining us live. Um, we give away a $15 gift card for every one of these lives. Leah, who is behind the Pinkfresh Studio name in the chat, will pick a winner at the end of the live. Um, and she just chooses from all the comments. So the way you enter is just what you're doing, chatting in the comment, leaving questions, leaving comments. Um, if you see a question that you can answer, feel free to do that. Um, and then one other entry that you can get is by sharing this video. There's a little share button and you can grab a link. You can share it on your own social media page, Facebook, Instagram, in a message, an email to a friend, and then just pop back over here and leave a comment. I just see created by Jackie just did that. Just let us know you shared and then that counts as an extra entry. One other thing we love and appreciate, um, not necessarily an entry for the $15 gift card, but we'd love if you hit that thumbs up button, especially if you are enjoying um, the content that we provide. That also helps more people find it, um, whether we're live or they're watching it on replay and we can grow our happy little live party that we enjoy having here. Um, and I already mentioned Leah's behind the scenes on the Pink Fresh Studio name. So especially when I get crafting, I'm gonna try and do two cards. I'm using the same set, but just slightly different ways. Um, a lot of times I get focused and I miss some of those comments and questions. I try and keep an eye on them, but it, it doesn't always work. Um, but Leah does a great job of catching all of those questions, all of those comments. Um, and if somehow we both miss it, it happens once in a while when the chat's moving really quick and whatnot. Um, just ask again. I promise we're not ignoring you. Just every now and then that happens and we might miss one. Um, hello, Crystal. Yes. Minus 40. My goodness. It's cold enough down here for sure. I, I won't complain though. I'm kind of, I don't know that we'll have snow still on Christmas, but it, if we are having it this close to Christmas, I'm just going to be happy and enjoy it. So, and then uh, one final thing, I have everything I'm using today. I'm pretty sure sometimes that changes in the middle of the live, um, but I'm pretty sure everything that I'm using is linked in the video description. So if you have any questions about what ink color I used or the stamp or stencil or um, anything else, that's a great reference. You can still ask and either Leah or I often will um, catch that and be able to answer it. And I try and leave the inks out where you can see what I'm using, but um, just in case you miss it or whatever, just letting you know that it's all there as a reference. No sneak peeks, nothing 
unreleased today, so everything's available and in stock. I double check that. So, all right, it looks like we're doing okay. We've got people here. We've gone through all the stuff we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and spin the camera around. Give me just a minute here, and we'll see about getting started on this. Okay, so we are going to use today the beautiful Blooming Peony set. And this set, it doesn't have a dye or hot foil or anything, but it has a beautiful cling rubber background stamp, which is beautiful, even for like coloring or watercoloring, if you're into some of that. Um, and then it's got, there's a couple stencil sets in this release that have lots of layering stencils. This one has seven sets, which includes, you can see on this top layer, the background. So it almost creates like its own pattern paper, um, which is one thing I love about this. So because of how intricate and layered this is, this set looks beautiful on its own with just the layering stencils. And of course, it looks fabulous with the stamp set. So we're going to use the exact same colors, but we're going to stamp one and just stencil one. So we'll be stenciling each layer two times, once on its own on just the A2 cardstock using the corner alignment guides, and then once over the stamped image, lining it up to that. Um, and I hope that kind of just will give you a side-by-side -side of exactly how they each look, again, by doing all the same colors and everything like that. Um, one thing I wanted to mention and note as we get started, um, I know a lot of people ask why sometimes we do red rubber versus clear and um, how we make that decision. A lot of it just has to do with how intricate the design is and how big it is. Since this is a full background size and it's got lots of little, just tiny intricate details, it stamps better with red rubber. You just get a really crisp, beautiful image. So that's kind of how we make that decision. And that's why some of them um, lean one way or the other. So we're going to do this. I'm also going to use sentiments from a previous release, the With Sympathy stamp set. Um, and part of why I'm doing that is I love that all of these more scripty sentiments have a coordinating die. So, and I also feel like this set is so pretty and serene and kind of perfect um, for sympathy cards. And as much as those aren't our favorite ones to make, they're some of the most meaningful cards that you can make, I feel like. Uh, as much as birthday cards and any other thing mean a lot. I feel like sympathy ones um, are just some of the most needed cards. And they're hard to make when you hit the time where you need them. So I always try to make sure I have um, a few in my stash and ready to go. So let's start here before we start stenciling. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this image. My Misty all ready to go. And I'm just going to heat emboss it in gold for this um, card today. And I'm just using a really big panel of white cardstock because I like all of the extra space. And we're just going to stamp it in the middle so we've got lots of room to work around. I've already pulled out my foam mat out of my Misty because the red rubber is thicker, so you don't need that extra space. So we're going to pick that up. I've got um, my Misty is well loved and well used, so I found... I get a little bit better image with a couple extra cardstock shims, um, especially when I'm not using um, the foam mat there. And I actually leave them under the foam mat now anyway. So like I said, it's been incredibly well loved um, and had lots of use. All right, I'm gonna run my powder tool over this because I'm gonna heat emboss today on this one, just because I love the look of gold heat embossing as well. And we're just gonna stamp, I'm just using clear embossing ink um, I need to get a re-inker for my other one, and I had a brand new one of these, so this is my juiciest embossing pad at the moment. If you do a lot of heat embossing, these do definitely um, run dry, <laughs> need refill. All right, using our beautiful stamp press, and I'm going to stamp a couple times. It's clear, so it's really hard to see and make sure you hit all the areas, and um, plus I feel like once... I've used the powder tool. It's just nicer um, to really make sure you've got plenty of ink on there because I feel like the powder makes it harder for the ink to stick um, to start, start with there. All right. I think this is good. I'm just gonna make sure I push around all of the little edges, tilt that around and it looks like 
it's all stamped really good. I know you guys can't see. I'm just kind of tilting around to look for that simple watermarked image. Okay, and I'll just set this aside for now. Watermark ink is easy to clean off, so I can get that later. And then let's get out our embossing powder. I'm going to copy Leah today and use um, get this. Yep. Use my Brutus Monroe. What's this one? Gilded. Any gold embossing powder. Just find your favorite. I have a couple, and I just like to kind of alternate between them. And then I found I just keep a sheet of paper underneath so I can tap off the extra. I think I actually got that all covered really well. I love just how detailed. A little tiny. A little fuzz in there that needed to. There we go. All right, let's carefully see if I can do this without making a mess. Okay, put that away, and then I'll grab my heat gun, and we'll heat emboss it, and then we'll kick right into uh, stenciling. Created by Jackie, yes, it is a fine powder. Okay, I think that all set. Now, when I told you guys that I felt like I was still in vacation mode, this will prove it. I got so mesmerized sitting and watching that um, embossing powder melt. I actually forgot for about a half a second that I was actually live and I was just sitting there enjoying my heat embossing. And I was like, oh, I need to make sure and keep this in the camera. So hopefully I didn't um, <laughs> reach off the camera or anything there. I said just a little final um, peek into my my brain here. I think coming from vacation mode straight back into Christmas mode is um, challenging to say the least. All right, so I have my stamped one, and then I have my let me make sure I don't have any bossing powder on. Just my A2 panel. So we're just going to go one right after the other and rotate through using um, the same ink colors on each thing. I've already rearranged. Um, I've rearranged my stencil layers just slightly. I'm actually sticking pretty close to the order. I think the only thing I pulled out and switched was I decided for stencil three, um, which is the little flowers, I moved that up to the second place. So I'm doing stencil one, then three, then two, four, five, six, and seven. Not a big change and not something you need to do, um, but for me, it was worth it. So I'm going to start here with this first stencil, and this is one of my favorite ones when you have the image stamped, because um, wait till we get it on and then pull it off. It actually, without doing any of the other stencil layers, just with the stamped image on there, it makes it look like really fancy, elegant stationery to me. I don't know how else to uh, describe that. I'm going to start with peach fuzz for the background. I kind of tried to play around it and use a little bit of a unique color combo today. Um, I don't always, sometimes I feel like I default to my super favorites, um, but I tried to just kind of come up with something a little different and unique today. We'll see, we'll see how it works, but I wanted to show this one in particular to start with. So we're going to do peach fuzz for all of that beautiful background. And this 
um, this particular layer, like I said, you're going to see what it looks like on here with only using this layer. But you can also completely skip this layer if you want to leave your background just plain and white or whatever color you've used. But I think it's so fun having a background one that it makes me kind of excited to use it. See, everyone's talking about how old it is. I know. Um, so I live in Western Washington and we very rarely get, um, you know, super cold. We might get down below freezing a little bit, but we basically, since we got home, and I don't think it's even until maybe Thursday or Friday, we have not been out of the 20s at the highest, which is really ridiculous for around here, especially with all the moisture in the air. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to um, a little bit warmer weather. Okay. Are you guys ready for, I feel like this reveal is so magical. I can't wait to show you how this looks. Ta-da! How gorgeous. And just imagine you could do a whole set of these and just switch up the color on the background. You could stamp them in any color you want. And it looks beautiful just like that. And that's one of my favorite things about this set. I didn't actually finish a card that way, but... Um, I just thought it was so stunning just when you add just that one layer on. Okay, we're gonna pivot here. I'm gonna switch these out and I should have wiped this down a little, but this is a soft color, so we won't worry about it. We're just gonna line this up on the A2 panel and add our background. Oops, of course, my tape slipped right as I ready to tear it down. Okay, try that again. All right, and this is one of the, the biggest layers too. So all of the other layers are gonna come together a little bit more quickly. But using the stencils on their own, one other fun thing that I love is this background kind of creates, I mean, you're using the alignment guides anyway, but it's like, you can see all the little placeholders for all the other layers to fit in, which is super fun. And I'm just kind of blending quickly here. This is a soft color, so I'm not too worried about um, where I'm getting it. It's a big area, so I'm not worrying about. It kind of naturally um, gets more depth and color right around the edges, like where the flowers are and stuff like that. All right. Clean this off. I'll remember that this time, and hopefully my fingers aren't all smudgy. And there's this one. It doesn't look like as much now because all it is the background. But we're just going to keep going and keep building this up. All right, Peach Fuzz is done. Let's switch over here to the next stencil layer, which I, again, I switched up. So this is stencil number three. Oh, yeah, glitter paste would be beautiful on this stencil too. All right, I'm going to switch back over. We're going to do, once again, the this one. So this is all of those little flower images, as well as the center of this, which is the only thing I'm really gonna mix up. I really don't want the center of my flower to be blue, but I do want these other little, in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I'm gonna use one of our little tiny brushes here, because I just wanna add have a little hint of color on the center of these. But I'm also going to switch over and grab a little bit of, I got a little warm, well, let's see, what color do I want in the center there? I'm thinking about it. No, I think I wanna do, I don't think I got this color out before, but I think I'm gonna do a little bit of yellow in the center there. So yeah, I think yellow is what we want. So let's get, one of these brushes. I don't quite have one yet for yellow, for the deeper yellow tone. So let's switch that. I know these little mini blending, blending brushes are the best thing ever. They're absolutely adorable. All right, we'll just do our yellow there in the middle. 
that's why this came out of my okay because i've got one with darker colors and one with lighter colors i got myself confused there for just a minute okay so that's all the sweet mustard and then we'll go back to that ocean breeze and we'll still use the little mini bend blending brush but let's clean this off let's add just a smidge of tape over there just to be safe so we don't get any blue over that yellow and then start using a little bit of ocean breeze here and i'm just going to touch i think i'm going to go around the outer edges to touch that color mostly and leave the centers a little bit more white i think i like that I'm just kind of, I don't know if it shows, but I'm just going around the outer edges of those flowers both ways so that most of my color concentration kind of focuses on the outer edges. Some of it's still getting in the middle, but. I'm seeing lots of comments about, I can't. I seriously can't wait for you all to be able to get your hands on these little brushes. They're just, I could use them all day and never get tired of them. Okay, we are done with that. Let's, oh, what am I doing? We're not done. We still need sweet mustard and coral or a ocean breeze. What am I thinking? We still need those for our other one, but let's do our magic reveal on this first and then move on. Ta -da! I love that just soft blue on there. All right, this is where I'm gonna keep forgetting. So you're just gonna have to kind of bear with me that I'm, have to remember that I'm not done until I've done the second layer. So same as before, let's pivot back over to Sweet Mustard. Pull that yellow brush out again. Nice and easy. Clean it off and mask it off a little. Okay, and back over to that ocean breeze with our little bitty brush. Yeah, Wendy, I wanted to have, because I mean, you guys all know I do a lot of blending, a lot of ink blending and stuff um, between all the lives. And so I didn't want to have to always clean between um, lighter and darker colors. So kind of all of the mid range and the dark ones, I can kind of get away with that because they're pretty small. So they will clean pretty easy. But I definitely wanted one for those lightest tones. Okay, I think that'll do on that. <laughs> Pivot, I say that all the time. Okay. Here is that next step reveal on this one. So again, this one, you can see it really quick and you can pick any spot that you want to stop and um, quit adding color. This one, you just basically see it build. And I, I think I would, like I said, the background you could choose to skip, but I think I would pretty well stick with adding all the other layers. So my advice there, unsolicited as it is. Let's put my brush away and then let's move on. We're going to start working on our big flower here. So. We're going to start with the first color for that, which is going to hit. I need to look at my. Um, yeah, OK, good. I just wanted to make sure that I'm on my lightest color like I thought. Pretty sure that all of our stencils are set up to go from lightest to darkest. But sometimes I doubt. And if you ever have those doubts, that's where that packaging it's the perfect reference because you can kind of see how everything comes together. And as I'm putting it on, I can go, oh, okay, yep, that's supposed to be that part of the flower. So, hey, nice and soft and light for our first color. 
I wanted to keep this flower really pale and delicate, um, especially on the one that I have stamped. I just want to keep, and you know what? I think I'm even going to, we are going to do that. I'm going to switch back over to my little brushes because I think that's just going to give me the control to come in and keep that color really soft. So we're going to start with just a hint of color at the base of all of this. And again, I'm, this tiny brush is allowing me to add that little bit of dimension in by choosing where I add the deepest color, which is kind of great. You know, I almost feel like I'm holding a paintbrush, just how artistic you feel when you're using these. Okay, this is gonna be pretty easy. I'm not gonna clean this soft color in between. <laughs> you know what, Cheryl, I planned on throwing my box away and then I saw Leah keeping them and using them and I just um, decided to keep it. How pretty, I hope you guys can see it's so soft on that first layer. And once again, anywhere on here, anywhere you choose, you can stop and just call it good and keep those colors super soft and light and pale. But we're gonna keep going and I'm remembering my other um, pencil piece. So we're gonna follow over and do that one. This one, I'm not as worried about keeping the colors light, but I'm still gonna keep that really soft look if I can, just cause it's kind of fun and why not? Make sure that's okay. And that. So, Bo, we were just talking about the brushes. These are, they've not released yet. Um, for the general public, they were one of the swag in our holiday um, event, our most recent event. So, we're just starting to use them and they'll be releasing very soon. All right, just a hint of color in there. Harder to see how that's all gonna come together, but we'll just keep moving forward and I think you'll start to see as we carry on. Okay, next layer coming on. This is the second layer of the flowers and it's just the slightly deeper layer. Switch over. I am keeping a separate brush. Um, for coral reef and ballet slipper for obvious reasons, because those colors are just a little bit different in toning. And I wanted to keep that option open. So, okay, so this one, I'm definitely concentrating my color towards the center and then fading it as I go out, just to keep that super soft, pretty look. Oh, it makes me happy, okay. All right, let's see how this layer now looks on there. Really is keeping that so soft and pretty. All right, on to the next one here. Let's line that up. Those corner alignment guides just right on there. And then we'll repeat the same thing on here. Oh, gently, Heather, gently. A little too uh, excited here. That's like so much fun. <laughs> All right, I think that about does it. Enough color fading out towards the edges there. Okay. Move that off. Let's check out this next layer on here. Building up nice and slow. So we've got one more layer on this big flower. And I'm starting maybe change my mind on um on what i want to do for final um for the leaves so i kind of picked a certain color combo and now like i said now I'm having second thoughts so let's get this on and then i'll ponder that 
if I want to switch to a different color than I have planned. All right, and I'm going, oh, hold on, I'll just open the passion fruit. I just need my darker, darker set of these brushes. That's what I was going for. The ink color was right, I just needed the different. Now I'm also debating, I think I'm, I'm just going to stick with the passion fruit, even for the center of um, those flowers. I was pondering there for a minute or two, just trying to decide what do I want to do? Same thing, we're focusing on the center there and then blending out towards the outer edges and then hitting the centers of because um, the pink and the blue will blend to kind of make pretty color. I was just debating on if I wanted to switch back over to blue tones on that. Okay, don't run away. And then let's switch this over. Okay, that is so pretty and soft and then yet striking on those colors in there. I love that. Okay, and back over we go the final one here. Okay, start in the middle, build this out. And then a little bit in the centers of all of those flowers. This is gonna matter even more on these because they don't have the um, the stamping detail on there. Right, Leah? No, same thing. I feel like it makes it just super dreamy and you can do a better job. I, Cause one thing I always struggle with is leaving that really light, soft area. All right, how pretty is that? All right, the only thing I'm seeing here that I might do, this is a trick I learned from Laura Basson. I'm gonna go back. No, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Nice, soft and dreamy. I was thinking about going back and kind of blending because I felt like I went a little darker on the passion fruit than I intended to. So I was gonna kind of merge that contrast, but I think I'm just gonna leave that really deep striking layer there. All right, now this is where I'm changing my mind because I wanted to go for kind of a really modern, different look. So I was gonna use browns for the leaves, but I'm looking at this, I don't know, what do you guys say? I almost feel like I need to switch back over to greens. I'm feeling greens might just be the way to go on this. I think the brown with the peach on the background, I don't know. Should I just stick with that color? Should we power through and just see how it looks? I bet it's not gonna look bad. Maybe we should just, I mean, I already listed it in the descriptions. So maybe we should just stick with it and power through and not give up too quickly. It's only paper and ink, right? So if we don't love it, we can always, well, we won't be able to do it live. We're gonna be committed for this because I don't have time to go back through all seven stencil layers and everything, but I don't like it. I can always remake it. But again, with that sympathy card theme, it might really work with that soft brown tone. So I'm gonna do it. Like I said, I was having second thoughts but I'm gonna try and just kind of commit and see how we like it. I'm seeing a lot of votes for green, but <laughs> like I said, sometimes the only way you really know how it's gonna look is just by going and doing it. So once again, if we don't love it, I still think it probably won't look bad. I just don't know if it'll look quite like I was imagining. So I see Leah says greens too, but well, like I said, I might have to remake this in with greens if not. So you ready? Let's see how it looks. Yeah, it does kind of just blend into the background. It probably would have been better with greens, but you know what? <laughs> we're, we're there now, so we're committed. I think it would really look bad if I tried to put green over the top of that. So I think we'll just kind of stick with it and keep those really muted tones. It just doesn't pop off the background as much as I think I pictured when I started. So just because the peach and the brown are 
similar enough tones, but on the bright side, it doesn't go bad. It just stays really, um, really soft and neutral. So it'll probably be even more soft and neutral in this version, but that's okay. And I'm just blending deeper at the base of all of the, the bigger clusters and then fading off to the softer as it goes out. It's easier, this is big enough that, um, oops, well, I guess we're just pulling that off now. I was gonna clean it a little before I did that, but caught a little bit on my hand. And you know, and oddly enough, I feel like I like it even better on this one. I think it shows the contrast a little more because you don't have the division of the gold heat embossing. So we'll keep going forward. The one color left, we are literally on our last stencil color or stencil layer, which I guess also means color. But so this is really helpful on this stencil. You'll notice some of the leaves haven't had color added to them yet. So all you've got to do on this one is line it up on the stamp image with all those ones that haven't had their first coat of color added. Easy, easy. And for this, we're just moving up to the next color of brown, which is go. Okay, I think that'll do. Yeah, gray probably would have been a really good choice. Um, Trevor just said that. I actually debated on grays, but I thought all my colors were too warm. All right, you know what? I'm, I'm liking it with that darker brown on there. I think it would look beautiful in greens, but I think it's kind of fun having that totally different, unexpected look too. I like it even more now. And again, this is a sympathy card and it almost looks like, um, so there's a little bit to me of a hint of like an um, like old fashioned fabric or something like that with the um, background there. Yeah, and a little bit of, you could probably do green at the base of the leaves. Now that I have the brown there, I'm a little scared to mix green onto it too, because I'm afraid I would end up just with not a really pretty brown tone and our browns are so pretty on their own that I feel like I should just kind of stick with that. But you totally could do that. I'm just not, um, not brave enough to <laughs> commit that far. I mean, committing to one color is one thing, but mixing brown and green, I just can't quite picture how those match together. So that's that final reveal for that one as well. So see how you have that totally different look. And it's Kathleen too, same thing. I think that darker brown is what really kind of made the difference. So I think without that, it might've felt like it was missing something. And the only thing, if I'm gonna go back and be fiddly about something, not quite sure yet, but I almost, as much as I love the peach fuzz on the background, part of me wonders if it would be good to warm it up with a little bit of pink, but I really don't know if I should mess with that. Not around the flower, but more like around the edges just to use, I'm gonna try that. Like kind of a vignette feel to it. And my tape is locked in sticky. So let's, let's kind of do that so that I can tape it down. And I'm just for this, I'm going to grab my, nope. There we go. A little bit of coral reef. And I'm just going to slightly hint over because um, peach fuzz and coral reef are one of my favorite color combos. So I'm keeping it really soft and just trying to add a little more hint of pink around the outer edges. Let's see how we like that. And you know what, that makes me, I hope that shows up on the camera, but that right there totally did it for me because that pink flower looked so stark and plain. I am in experimenting mode apparently. Oh goodness. But you know what? That, that was a lucky experiment that actually worked. So let's do the same on this one. It just feels like it pulls all the focus right into that flower now. 
Like I said, I don't know if it shows super well in the video, but for me here in real life, it makes a huge, huge difference. So we're going to go for that because that's that feels like the finishing touch. And you know, sometimes when you just look at some and feel like it needs a little something else, sometimes you don't want to go too far, but sometimes it's worth that um, being brave and taking chances. Pull that off. Oh yes. Same thing on that one. I really, really like that so much better. I'm glad I was, I figured I couldn't go too wrong on it because I know peach fuzz and coral reef look really pretty together. And I can honestly say um, 100% that I've, this is a very different color combo than I have ever, ever, ever used. So apparently you can never run out of new color combos. All right, let's start trimming these down. For this one, I'm just going to trim it right to the edge because I want to put it right onto my card base. So I'm just going to carefully line it up right on that stencil background using my little paper trimmer. Right up, I'm just using basically the edge of where my stencil ends. So it makes it really easy to cut that to the right size. Last one there. Okay, I can save all those little scraps for later. This one is already sized down, but I think I'm actually going to trim that one. Retro tapestry. That's a great description. Okay. I love that. All right. This one, I'm going to leave full size. I don't think I want to trim that one down any. I just want to put that right on my A2 card. This one, I want to trim it down a little. I thought about adding pot boiling, but I decided not to. I could just trim this down with my paper trimmer, but there's something really fun about the edge you get from a die, how it finishes off the edge. And since I have this set that coordinates with the nested rectangles, um, I decided I would use that to trim my panel down a little. I'm just gonna pick where I wanna center that out. I'm gonna kind of go down here so I get a little bit of both of those blue flowers. Then I'm gonna run over and die cut this and I will be right back. Yeah, the no line would be really cute as a square or as an oval. There'd be so many shapes to cut it, but I think that's gonna be fun to use. That one. All right, so again, you don't have to, it's just a basic rectangle die, but for me, I love that I can just do that and I can, I, you see how I could kind of slide it around so I could pick where I wanted to trim it. That's another, where with my paper trimmer, I would have just had to kind of choose and commit and wouldn't have had that same, uh, same luxury. So look at how, just on a white card base, how pretty and classy that's going to look there. And then this is just going to go edge to edge on this card base. I could trim, and I actually thought about it, just trimming down. And now I'm having second thoughts. I might actually do that. Just trim it down slightly. I don't think I'll go as far as using a die, but I might just trim off a little bit. So I add the smallest um, bit of a border around the edge. So let's maybe just do that. That'll do it there. I have to take off just a smidge more, but a little tiny bit more down here. didn't really uh, measure too uh, scientifically. I just kind of went for what size look good. Okay, now that I've done that, now I do want to hear more. I'm just going to keep adjusting here, apparently. I love that this will trim off um, the tiniest little bits as I want. 
Okay. And that's perfect. I actually love that little teensy tiny bit of a border that we've added. And then throw away those little scraps. And then let's pick some sentiments to add on to these. All that set out and I'm actually debating. So I'm gonna use the coordinating guys, obviously for this card. Have to pick which sentiment on there. And then this one, I'm actually thinking I might just pick a sentiment and stamp it directly onto that background. Um, stencil right on the front, the card front. You know, Deb, I easily could have done that on this one to keep um, it all on there, but I didn't really think about it because I also love layers and dimensions. So I don't do it very often, um, but you absolutely could do that. All right. Let me think here. I really love this sentiment. Nothing that is loved is ever lost. Oh, my heart is with you. That actually fits really well. I'm just trying to decide to stamp it. I feel like this one, I want to stamp it directly on so I don't cover up any of that background. And I feel like that kind of tucked in there looks kind of nice. And then this other one I'm going to use, got some, uh, is that big enough? Maybe not quite up there. Here's a little bit bigger scrap. I think that comfort and peace is going to go on this one. And that one I will stamp and die cut. Um, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> My children's inheritance has shrunk. That's funny. Time to buy stamps instead, apparently. All right, I'm going to do this in those out of the way here. A little bit of detail black. It's my mini cube. And then I got to decide, I guess on the bright side, if I stamp it right on that background and I don't love it, I can stamp and die cut it and pop it over the top and no one will ever know, right? Okay, I think I need to re-ink my little detail black. But fortunately, I can stamp as many times as I want with the Misty and stamp really carefully so I keep all of those lovely crisp little details. That's good for that one. Let's clean that off. Already got my uh, stamp cleaner there. A lot of uh, detail in there. Let's see how well it cleans off. I'll use this one before and it cleans off really well. Pull out my little toothbrush if I need to. And I agree, just like Leah said, even though it's technically a sympathy set, some of these, I mean, just thinking of you, that's kind of more of a general um, sending hugs your way. Even that is, is a little bit more of... Uh, Multi-purpose, I guess, if that's the right word there for that sentiment. Okay, nestle this. Where do we want to put that? Maybe right there, kind of centered on the bottom. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how this one goes. And this is another one of those sentiments that definitely fits um, more multi-purpose, just kind of encouraging. Okay. And I think that looks great on there. So I'm happy. I'm excited to stamp it on there. It keeps it just, actually, and even that stamp, I think got it all nice and crisp on that second one. So, um, a lot of times sympathy cards, it's it's nice to keep them just simple. They don't have to be super elaborate. Um, but they can be beautiful and heartfelt and meaningful. Because really at that point in time, just simply knowing that someone is thinking of you is enough. It doesn't have to be um, 
anything beyond that. So might look fine. Here will I mess around and stuff. There we go. Let's grab the coordinating dies for these. Nope, that does not go with that. That one fits there. And I don't need a die for this one. So we only need to die that this little one. Keep that in place. I'll be right back from my die cut machine one more time. And I love how detailed these dies cut out as well. Hopefully you can kind of see that on there. I'm going to grab my little pokey tool and get all those little tiny tidbits out of there. Move that out of the way and put that away because I lose more little dyes like that. It's one of the things I love about Pink Fresh is uh, one beast dyes. And that right there just fits perfect, tucked right in there. Okay, so we need a foam panel first for this one, because this has simple, no dimension except for just that panel. So I'm just gonna adhere this full foam sheet on here. And these, um, we talk about these a lot in our lives. Um, Lee and I both create these using, it's just sheets of like fun foam and then wide score tape that you can buy um, in a big old roll. And it makes just a really stable dimensional panel. Um, another option that I sometimes have done lately, especially if you only want a little bit of dimension, get this on here straight. Um, using scraps of paper, like even colored or other paper that you don't use all the time. Um, and then you can only put a couple layers and it just adds a bit of dimension. It does make it heavier than the foam because it's more solid, but um, we'll add a little bit of bling on this, just some simple, but how, um, how just perfect and pretty is that? It looks like, again, like your own pattern paper, which incidentally would be another good way to make a sympathy card like this is find some simple pattern paper. And I'm just gonna use my tape runner because this, I've got such a little border there that I wanna keep um, visible and in sight. So if I put it on foam, you're not even gonna see that little white border on the card. So I'm gonna keep it just adhered straight down. I think I got that straight. So it's hard when I'm not looking straight on at it and see even this. Yeah, it's straight. It just feels like it's crooked when it's laying sideways, you know what I mean? All right, and then we'll grab some little bits of foam adhesive and we will pop this up with foam. We'll just use some of these little pre-trimmed strips to make it easy. Um, so Bo, all it is is it's like big sheets that you get like in your kids craft section at your local store, or you can find it. Um, I pick it up on Amazon. Like kids fun foam, I think is what it goes. And then let me grab, um, show you the big roll of score tape. One second. Comes in this massive heavy roll. So it's five inches wide. I don't remember how many inches long, but I trim the panels down to a little smaller um, than an A2 card. And then all you do is stick it on, trim it off, turn it over and put the um, adhesive on the other side. But you can just see next to my hand, it's huge. So that's how we do those. We haven't, I know um, a lot of times Leah will kind of demonstrate it while she's live because she needed to make another one. Um, but that's, and you can just use an adhesive, um, just like foam adhesive tape and just line the back of it. I just like that this is a little more, um, 
I feel like it's cost effective because that fun foam is relatively inexpensive. And then the tape lasts a really long time. You can see how big that roll is. And I also love how it feels like it makes it really stable and sturdy so that when you um, pop it in the mail or whatever, you don't have to worry about it getting smushed or anything. Going for some little bitty pieces just to make sure I've got enough on there to hold it stable, but I think we're gonna call that good. Foam and everything. All right, let's just ponder around where we wanna tuck that. I don't wanna cover up this little flower here, so make sure I have it on there square. All right, now we'll add a little bit of simple wing and we'll call these done. And I think I've just got my little bin of all the different blings. And I thought about that one. Nope. I think gold would disappear too much. Mm -mm. I'm pretty sure I think this is this is one that just calls for champagne glitter cups. So we're just going to keep it simple and put a few of those on there. And you know what? It looks like we're even going to make it in time with two cards. So I can be happy with that. And I love just the, uh, these glitter drops are the perfect neutral. Um, they just kind of go with everything and really work, which is so fun. Don't have to overthink too much about what color. They're so versatile, I guess. They're kind of a good mix between, almost like between silver and gold without being um, too strong one way or the other. There we go. I need another one of that size and then another one of the tiny ones there. I actually might move. Let's see. Let me think about this here a little bit. This is the fiddly part that I'm gonna be distracted by, but I gotta get the bling on there just right. You know what I mean? And I like that kind of in a little swirl away from both sides. It's not super like in your face, but it adds a good finishing touch. You know, a little more of the big ones. I kind of need a refill of this. I don't know if you can tell, um, this may have been a favorite color perhaps. There we go. Nope, I want the tiniest one still there. These, there's four sizes in these, and I'm mixing this one. I use the biggest, and then the two smallest. This card over here, I think I'm going to use. Um, there's another big one. The biggest, and then the second biggest, and then the tiniest one. So kind of alternating a little bit between, and it does pop a little bit more on that background, at least in real life. So those away before I mess that up, stick these down. And then, and what I just saw, I missed what Lydia said about the bling bin. It went past. It was, um, I actually got it. Oh, it's been, I've been on vacation, guys. I haven't used my glue in a little while. So I have to do a quick little bee clog. Should do it. Hopefully that was enough. Yep. Normally I use this so often it doesn't have time to clog because it's used so frequently. This time there was a little bit of a break in there. All right, stick that one down. Um, yeah, I ordered it on Amazon. I kind of ordered a few different. I've been doing some reorganization and it came in and ended up being the perfect size to fit all of um, all of my different little packages of bling from Pink Fresh. And then I can just pull them all out together and have them all in one place. Okay, so there we go. The one set and same colors, but just slightly different look. So you get that more detailed look with the stamp image on there and then the softer background 
kind of effect there. And then we pop the stamp up with the sentiment with foam on this one and stamp this one directly on. So very similar, but just a hint different and kind of two different ways of using those. So we've got this all finished. It's right at two o'clock. So I'm going to spin the camera around, say a quick goodbye and um, let Leah announce the winner for us for today. And then I'll let you guys be on your way because it's almost Christmas and I'm sure, I'm sure that I'm not the only one that has a million and one things to do. All right, keeping an eye on those comments so that I don't miss anything. Got a set of, I miss that glimmer drops. I Yeah, and you know what? I see a few people talking about sets and yeah, that seems to be the thing is we, everyone wants to buy individually. I think everyone wants to pick their own colors and choose what they like. So um, we've just kept them individual and then you can kind of pick your favorites. And if you want them all, um, you can click on and do them that way. And if not, you can individually choose them, but it makes it easier to, you know, at least for me to balance the budget, because then you can look and think, do I want all of them? Or am I just clicking it? Cause it's the easy button and they're all there. So, um, that keeps you a little more, um, thinking about what you choose to purchase as well. So. Hi, Joan. I just saw Joan on there. I have a lot to do, but here I am. Same, same as me, but crafting's fun. So we all got to do that anyway, right? All right. And there is, that's what I was waiting for. Leah just got the winner on there. Congratulations to Kimberly Onan, if I said your name right. You are today's $15 gift card winner. So congratulations. And all you need to do is email Leah at pinkfreshstudio.com. It's all on the comment there where she tagged you. Um, give her two or three days to get back to you. Uh, business days, which means she should make it before Christmas. Uh, give her a little extra grace the next couple of weeks with the holiday. It might be a tiny bit slower. All right. I, I'm not sure yet if we have another live this week. So just watch our social media. Um, stay tuned for that. I probably won't see you again before Christmas. So I'll say Merry Christmas to everybody and maybe see you next week. Um, but yeah, take care, everybody. Have a great day. Have a great weekend and a great, um, great holiday. Enjoy time with your family. We'll see you again soon.